Good evening. Good evening. Welcome as we enter into the next three days. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then I guess they call it now Holy Saturday. And this kind of puts a culmination, I mean not really a culmination, but it puts Lent really into perspective, especially tomorrow as you know, why God the Father sent his son. And we are continuing our midweek uh, theme on the witnesses of Jesus, his passion. And remember a few weeks ago, I had a message on Melchus, cut off the ear. Well, that happened on uh, Maud Day Thursday. Today, we're looking at another witness, another character on Maud Day Thursday, Judas. And so more about that in a, more about that shortly. I just want to make one um, announcement or reminder, not a reminder, announcement, that because almost all of our elders are in the choir, um, when it comes time for the words of institution, I will say the words of institution. Those communing in the pew can commune in the pew. Then I'm going to sit down and wait because the choir will be singing a piece. When the choir is done, Paul will be robed and he'll come up and join Matt and then we will do communion for the rest of you. Let's begin in a word of prayer. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, a lot of times when we think of the word Judas, we, we see evil in him. We see one who has betrayed you. But Lord, tonight in the message, we're going to focus on how we are just like him. And Lord, we pray that you open our hearts to see that and then to, to appreciate and to value and to, and to love the Lord's Supper in which we have forgiveness of sins, in which by his shed blood we have eternal life. Be with us, Lord, this evening as we worship you. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we continue our Lenten journey, we focus on the night when Jesus was betrayed. Satan leads Judas to this grave sin. But Judas isn't the only guilty person at the table. Even as Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper for the forgiveness, life, and salvation of his disciples, they all still fail him. Even though we receive the Lord's Supper regularly for our forgiveness, life, and salvation, we still fail Jesus as well. But our Heavenly Father invites us to come to him with repentant hearts seeking for forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we have betrayed you in our thoughts, words, and actions. We have pursued other things that should be more important than you. Forgive us, Lord, on account of Jesus. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Though we abandon and betray our Lord, he never abandons or betrays us. Jesus Christ has taken away your sins and failures by his death and resurrection. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are welcome and forgiven because of Jesus. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. You may be seated.
Ghost in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. First lesson from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the firehead, legs and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning, if some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover on that same night. I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all of the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when you see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. This is the word of the Lord. We rise to hear those words of Jesus. Our gospel lesson this evening, the 13th chapter from the book of John. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
dear brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, when you think of Judas, I bet if I would ask five people here, when I say the word Judas, what would come to your mind? And then if I would ask, well, what happened to Judas, you would know. But see, that's just one small part of the life of Judas. And so tonight I want to get beyond that and to have us see why Judas is part of this story. But I think more importantly, how Judas fits in to the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Slide. It took three years to complete. It's one of the most recognized paintings in the world with an image found on things like carpet, carvings, canvases, and I googled a few well, this morning. You can get it on coffee mugs now and you can have it on your tombstone. With lifelike facial expressions unable to be captured by anyone at this time, this 15 by 29 foot painting became an instant masterpiece. When da Vinci was 43 years old, the Duke of Milan asked him to paint this. Uh, da Vinci worked for three years and noticed he grouped the disciples into three, two groups on either side with the central figure in the middle. When the masterpiece was finished, Da Vinci said to a friend, quote, look at it. Now this is not the, this is the second painting. The first painting has something I'll tell you um, so the, his friend said this, look at it and give me your honest opinion. His friend said it's wonderful. He said, Christ's chalice is so real I can't take my eyes off of it. Immediately, da Vinci took a brush and painted over the chalice, exclaiming, nothing shall detract from Jesus. And that's the painting we have. The chalice was right in the middle. It was a tall one, and it literally took your focus off of Jesus. Nothing shall distract from Jesus. And why is that? Because Jesus was betrayed. Let that soak in for a moment. Jesus was betrayed. You know, how many times have you heard me? You know, there's a thing in the church, pastor, now I'm not saying it for this church body or anything, but there's this general sense in Christendom, we do too many things without even thinking about it. It becomes rote. Let's focus for a minute on the words of institution. On the night when he was betrayed. But yet when we hear them, our mind keeps us going. Took bread, blessed it, gave it. Took drink. And I think at times we, we fail to really hear those words that he was betrayed. Jesus says in John 13, truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver. And get this one. Betrayed by Judas with a kiss. 
Now, when you think of the word kiss, several things can come to mind. It can be a romantic kiss. It can be a... Um, a, a no, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, some of you who've traveled overseas um, in France, when you greet someone, um, what's the typical greeting? As you kiss on each side of the cheek. But notice here how intimate Judas is connected to the Lord's Supper. How connected he is to these events this evening. Betrays Judas, he betrays Jesus with a kiss. Next slide. According to Matthew 26, Judas was seated close to Jesus. Now, we have to speculate, but I think probably close enough for the two of them to carry on a private conversation. Rhonda, give me the figure to the left. One more. That guy right, nope, down, left, there. She has the remote, I don't. Uh, Judas. Notice he's in close proximity to Jesus. Now again, think of this. Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him. Why would he be right there at the right side of Jesus? Perhaps to carry on that private conversation. But it may be that, and again I said may because scripture doesn't say, that Jesus singles out Judas as an important guest. And when you think of the whole narrative of Monday Thursday, Judas is an, an important guest. Now, um, uh, John Stregge, when you get invited for a banquet at Buckingham Palace, let me know where they seat you. Because, you know, you have a seating chart. And obviously the dignitaries, the closest you are to the queen, the closer you are. So obviously Jesus was on to something here. And then it happens. Jesus then gives Judas a morsel of bread. And here's an interesting thing. John 13, then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. And the book of Matthew, the book of Mark, and the book of Luke, you do not find this reference of Satan entering into Judas. It's only here in the book of Luke, sorry, the book of John. Satan enters into Judas. Next slide. What do you see? I know it's kind of hard in the back, but to the elbow of uh, Judas, what do you see on the table? You see bread? You see something, Rhonda, give me the, the thing that's built. She's like, what's that? That white thing looks like a salt shaker that's tipped over. Oh, never mind, I'm looking at that screen. <laughs> that, there you go. <laughs> you know, and again, we don't have an accounting of each piece in there. But when I saw that, I remembered this. Matthew 5 tells us that his disciples are the salt of the earth. Judas lost his salt because of greed. We lose our salt because of our greed, of our jealousy, of our lust for more and less for Jesus. Next one. In the middle. Now, on the left and right, obviously it looks like bread. Now, all common historians and scholars believe that what was on that plate was fish. Whether herring, and I can't think of the other one. But again, here's something. 
in da Vinci's northern Italian dialect, the word for fish in that dialect describes someone who denies and does not believe in Jesus. So the very fact that fish was on that table And in that dialect, it means someone who does not believe. Are you starting to understand, see how this adds to the event we're celebrating tonight? Next slide. Judas was not the only sinner that night. All the disciples and likewise all of us today. So here's a question. Why did Jesus allow all of this to happen? Well, we could say it's for eternal life. He did it to take the sins of the world away. All of these answers are right. But let's go back to the words of institution. This is why I am so thankful that I'm a Lutheran. Words mean something. Take and eat. Take and drink. This is for you. Those words for you are very powerful. God's not against you. God's not in opposition to you. God is not your enemy. God is for you. His love is so intense and so personal. Here's a question to ponder again. I'll give you a few seconds after I ask. When it comes to the Lord's Supper, How many are in your party when you go up to commune? Well, one answer could be all those who are gathered. We are are commuting as the body of Christ. We can say we commune with all the saints, the archangels, all the company of heaven. All right answers. But again, it misses the importance, the personal nature of communion. How many are in your party too? So John and Terry, when you come up, I'm sorry, but it is between God and John, period. God and Terry. What a loving relationship an intimate, personal God who loves us so much. You know, Martin Luther writes, Jesus never gives up on us. We may give up on ourselves, but Jesus will never give up on us. Did you know that since its completion in 1498, the Last Supper painting has been falling apart? Da Vinci, always the inventor, tried using new materials for this painting. Instead of using the customary wet plaster to make it, he used dry plaster. The dry plaster worked well artistically, but not so well for sustainability. And experts have been working on restoring it ever since. When I read that, something came to me. How fitting. The Lord's Supper is for people whose lives, like that painting, are falling apart. In this life, we never get it right. But thank God we have those sweet words for you. 
And so tonight, we see ourselves in the shoes of Judas. But we see ourselves in the mercy and the grace of God. Forgiven, renewed, restored, because that intimate relationship with his body and his blood for you. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. gather our tithes and our offerings for the Lord.
we rise. We pray the prayer he has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let us confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. Ever-present God, stay with us. For darkness has come and the day is now past. Forgive, we pray, both our neglect in doing good this day and the wrongs we have done. Awaken us in the morning, bathed in the light of our baptism, so that we will be ready to love and serve you and our neighbor. God of strength, the peace you provide through the cross of Christ flows like a river through the chaos of our lives. Lead us to drink deeply from the still waters of your peace and thereby dispel any anxieties and fears so that we may serve you with humility and grace. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all of the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray Martin Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat my body given for you. If you're communing in the pew, take and eat the body of Christ. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink, this is the true blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink his true blood shed for you, and now depart in his peace. Amen. You may be seated.
may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting depart in his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. At this time, in preparation for Good Friday services tomorrow, as you come tomorrow, everything up here will be stripped. It would be bare as a reminder of the crucifixion of Christ and what you know he endured, that, that black, that dark night. And as items are removed, I will be reading from Psalm 22. Psalm 22 starts out with a question that we hear Jesus ask. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, it's, it's interesting. Jesus fervently prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, take this cup from me. But now it seems this prayer is not answered. And in this prayer, the psalm prayer, we see that struggle. And then as we get later down, we find the reason of why the struggle. My God, I call out by day, but you do not answer. I call out by night, but there is no relief for me. You are seated as the Holy One, praised by Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and they were rescued. They trusted in you and they were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They sneer. They shake their heads. They say, trust in the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. But you are the one who brought me out of the belly. You made me trust when I was at my mother's breasts. I was cast on you from the womb. From the belly of my mother, you have been my God. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls from Bashan encircle me. Enemies open their mouths wide against me, like a lion that tears its prey and roars. Like water, I am poured out. All of my bones are pulled apart. My heart has become like wax. It has melted in the middle of my chest. My strength is dried up like broken pottery, and my tongue is stuck to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me, 
A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be distant. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, and I declare your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Stand in awe of him, all you descendants. For he has not despised nor detested the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him. But when he cried out, to him, he heard. You are the source of my praise in the great congregation, and I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who fear him.